Hey guys, welcome to You Fix It Garage. This is video number three in a five part series that I'm doing over RV system brakes. In this video, I'm gonna be showing how to remove and replace a rear brake rotor on a workhorse P-series chassis. Uh, the, work, the RV that I'm working on today is a 2003 Safari Trek. In the two prior videos, I showed in video one how to jack the RV up and properly support it. Uh, so that you can uh, safely work on the brake system. Video number two was inspecting the rotors, the calipers, the brakes, the brake lines, and how to replace and maintain those things. And then that brings us to this one of how to uh, remove that rotor. Before I get started, I just want to say that the brake system on your RV is a critical piece of safety equipment, uh, and it needs to be maintained properly. So this video is being provided for informational purposes only. I suggest you do your own research and you consult a professional if you have any doubts at all about the proper way to maintain and safely uh, work on your RV brake system. So with that said, let's get into the video. These rear brake rotors on these workhorse chassis can be intimidating uh, because this is a, it's a pretty big job. You're gonna have to pull out one side of your axle shaft um, and uh, take some nuts loose. You've got some bearings in there that, that hold that assembly. And so this can be an intimidating job, but it's a job that you can do yourself uh, if you just have a little bit of knowledge. So the first thing you gotta do is remove these bolts across the front of here. Now, when you do that, that's gonna break this seal and you're gonna get axle grease that's gonna, or axle oil uh, that's, uh, differential oil that's going to drip out right here. I'm actually replacing mine. So I pulled the drain plug down there on the bottom of the pumpkin and I drained all of it out first, but I still have some dripping right here. And this stuff stinks to high heaven and you'll almost never get it off of you. So wear some gloves and put yourself down a drip pan or be prepared for the wrath of your wife or significant other whenever you bring that smell into the house. These nuts on the front of here are 5 8 uh, I didn't demonstrate how to take them out. I figure you can do that yourself. Uh, once you get these out, you're gonna see that your oil begins to leak right there. But what that does is it frees up this axle shaft so that you can pull it out. Uh, I suggest having, again, gloves and a rag. And you can pull this axle shaft out a little bit and then use the rag to wipe it off as you pull it out so you don't drip a bunch of oil all over the place. So the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is look inside here and there's a little clip ring and it clips into one of these detents in this nut. This one is on the bottom right here. You can just barely see it and I've already taken a screwdriver and I've pried it out of the way. Oh, but So you just take a screwdriver, stick in there, pry it out of the way so that that's open. And once you've done that, you can take your, your screwdriver and just put it on one of the, the uh, notches and a little small hammer. Shouldn't take too much. These shouldn't be on really, really tight. And you can get that to spin free. Next thing to come out is this little basket. And you can see right there, there's the one that was bent down. And I just pried it out of the way. So I'll probably straighten that one back up before I put it back in there. So back up in there, there's another nut right up in there that's locked in. So you're gonna take, do the same thing, take your screwdriver. Just, it takes just a couple little taps and that's gonna loosen that nut up. So once that nut comes loose, then your whole uh, hub assembly is starting to come loose to come off. So it may move around a little bit or come down some, but the thing that's gonna come off is this nut. And then the next thing is the bearings, the outer bearing that holds the hub assembly on. on it. All right, once you get that off, pull out on this just a little bit it's going to start to come out and you can get a hold of this 
washer that's in there. And then the next thing is the bearing. And be careful, don't drop it in the dirt. With the hub free and the nuts and the outer bearing and everything out of there, then it's really just a matter of supporting this, this hub assembly and pulling it on off. Be aware you've got an inner bearing in there and you got some seals that you don't really want to damage. So kind of lift it up and support it. And here I'm just showing the uh, inner oil seal that has to come out. Notice how dirty it is. You want to stick a rag or a paper towel or something in there to keep the dirt from getting in the bearing whenever you pry that loose. And I'll demonstrate prying that loose next. Leverage on it really. So I'm going to try some different tactic here. So I'm not really worried about damaging the seal because I'm going to replace it. But I don't want to damage the bearing because I don't want to have to replace it. It's starting to move now. And I'm sure there's a tool or a machine or some better way to do that. But that's my method and hey, it was fairly effective. Got my brake disc down here or, or my rotor hub, whatever you want to call it down here on the concrete, I've got some two by fours underneath it to support it a little bit, and I've got a hammer. But really all this involves is just taking a hammer and driving those out. That's what it takes. Now, if you've got a, you know, a 10 ton press or something like that, you can press those out. That's a very crude way of doing it, but as you saw, it's effective. So here's my hub. This I've got to keep because this is going to be reused. And here is the brake rotor that's being replaced right here. I inspected all of these bolts that I hammered out and other than the, the dent on the front side of them, they're all in good shape. Uh, the threads don't appear to be stretched or deformed. Uh, the the uh, bites, the little channels in them are not messed up. And so I really don't see any reason to replace these. Uh, at some point before you put the new rotor on this old hub, this surface, this mating surface in between the two of them needs to be cleaned real well. Any rust or grit or oil or anything really that's in between here can, can cause these not to sit together straight and it's gonna cause your brake disc to show run out once you put the disc on and you, you put it back on the truck. So uh, I just used some emery cloth and I polished all this up and I got all of the, the uh, surface rust off of here. But what I wanna do is cinch that rotor down to this tight so that when I drive those in, it's, it's very square and flat to each other. So again, I've got the face of my hub sitting on some two by four so I don't gall it up. And I'm putting this down and I'm lining up the holes so that I can drop those bolts in. And then I'm gonna use a punch and I'm gonna drive them in place. You don't want to cinch these up with the nuts on the front and just try and suck them in with an impact driver because you will stretch your threads on here. So they really need to be driven back in. So you just take them and drop them into the holes and they should drop down in partially in every hole. All right, once those are in every hole, let me grab a punch and I'm gonna drive them down in place. And just like that with the magic of video, I'm back. This is the punch I'm gonna use. Bought it at Harbor Freight today because I didn't have one big enough to do this job. So uh, any punch will work. Uh, I've heard of people using a uh, half inch uh, ratchet extension. 
I don't recommend doing that unless you're tired of that ratchet extension and ready to buy another one. But you just put this on the back of your nut and drive away. All right, that's got them all seated down in there very well. So there is my new brake rotor installed on the hub, ready to go back on the RV. I had some problems with my audio on this clip, but this is just a uh, clip of me showing how to reinstall that rear seal, uh, get it oiled real good, put it back down in there, and then the next thing that's got to go in is the, the new oil seal. And that new oil seal is directional. It's got a round spring on the inside, so make sure that spring goes down. And then you just want to tap it down in uh, kind of lightly. You don't want to get crazy with it. I used a 2 by 4 and a small ball-peen hammer and seat it back down in there real good. Try not to get uh, a bunch of trash down in the bearing. Once you've got the new seal on there, then it's back to the spindle. And you want to clean that spindle off real good, especially up towards uh, the back where that oil seal is going to rotate. Make sure that's all cleaned off real good and oil it up. And then you want to support the hub as you put it back on there, uh, trying not to drag it across the threads on the outside. Um, if you're worried about that, you can wrap some electrical tape around the threads, uh, but you definitely don't want to damage the seal or the bearings and get it slid back up on there. Once the hub is up on the spindle, the next thing to go on is the outer bearing. It's just going to slide up in there. And then the washer. And be sure and line it up with the keyway. And before I go any further, I want to explain how these bearings run. They, these bearings run in an oil bath. And that oil normally would be to a level even with the bottom of the, the axle shaft right here. So in other words, when this cover is on here, there's oil in here up to that level. And so those bearings are always running in oil. Well, when you first put this thing back together, there's no oil in here. And so uh, you don't want to run down the road with no oil on your bearings or even just that light coat of oil on the bearings is not enough. And it can take 10, 15, 20 miles for the oil to slosh around enough and run enough of it run out here so that these bearings are sufficiently oiled. So uh, there's a process where you uh, put everything back together and you actually lower this end of the axle down about six inches, which causes the oil to run out and it'll fill that chamber. So that's a very important step. Make sure that you don't put these bearings back in there dry and go running down the road thinking that they're gonna be oiled because there's no oil being pumped in here. It's just whatever happens to make its way down to the end of this axle shaft and that can take a little while. And then the inner nut Okay, you're going to take the castle nut socket, run that nut up in there till it's snug, and then you're going to need a torque wrench. And in order to seat these bearings, this needs to be torqued to 70 foot pounds while you rotate the hub. And so I'll show that. I don't know if you can see that. This is a little difficult because these teeth don't catch very well. Okay, so every time I would rotate that and torque it, then rotate it again, it would get just a little bit more of a bite every time. So now it's torqued down to 70 foot-pounds, and it needs to be backed off half a revolution now. Okay, so we've torqued it to 70 foot-pounds, backed it off a half a revolution. Now it needs to be torqued to 18 foot-pounds. Now 
The nut's torqued. Uh, 18 foot-pounds is where you leave it. You don't back it off any after that. The next thing that goes on is this retainer clip. And then after that is the outer nut. This outer nut goes on and it gets torqued to 98 foot-pounds. Once you get this outer nut torqued down, if you're lucky, one of these slots is going to line up with one of the retainers on that, uh, that clip. And so then you're going to bend the tab down into the slot right there. If it doesn't line up, you may have to tighten it or loosen it just a little bit. The outside, uh, this nut is not as critical uh, of a torque probably as the inner nut because it's not placing any uh, push on the bearings. But anyway, get one of these lined up and bend it in place. There, I just took a screwdriver and I bent that up and then I tapped it back down in there. So there, right there, that's got the nut locked in place. The hub still rotates easily. And that's just about got this job finished. I'm gonna get a dial indicator and I'm gonna make sure for uh, lateral play and I'm also going to check this disc for run out. Here I've got my dial indicator uh, set. I've got the magnetic base attached to the end of the axle shaft and then I've got the the dial in contact with the outside of the hub, the face of the hub right here. What I'm checking for is lateral play in the bearings. So these bearings are torqued down. There should be uh, really no lateral play in it. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is grab on both sides of it, rock it back and forth, and see if I can get some lateral play. And it appears to be pretty good. The last thing to do before putting the axle back in is to check the run out on the rotor. And I've got a magnetic base stuck here to the axle and a dial indicator set up with the needle uh, or the, the uh, end of it up against the brake rotor about a quarter inch in from the, in, from the outside of it. And zoom in here, focus a little bit. So what you're looking for is less than two thousandths run out as you rotate your disc. And you can see right there I've got probably a half a thousandth of run out, which is not too bad. So this is good to go. I can install the axle back in and put the bolts back on on the outside right here. Here's my axle. I'm just gonna go right back up in with it. I'm reusing the old uh, gasket that was on here. I inspected it, it's in good shape. So I'm just gonna reuse it. All right, now it's just a matter of putting these nuts back in getting those torqued. I'll put the torque spec up here and uh, then lowering this to allow some, some grease to run down here. Torque the nuts on the end of the spindle, or actually on the end of the axle right there. I refilled my differential all the way up to the, the drain hole so that it was actually running back out a little bit. And now I have this side of the axle lowered down uh, six inches lower than the other side uh, so that that oil will run down here and lube those bearings. So I'm going to give that about five minutes, then I'm going to raise it back up and put the wheel on. All right, so there you go. That's how you replace the rear brake rotor on a P32 series chassis. I hope this video has been informative. I've given you the knowledge and skills to save a little bit of money and 
that we've made your brake system just a little bit safer. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, add a comment. Click that button, next button to watch the video over the Hydro Boost upgrade. And you guys be safe out there.